Oh, I love being right, and I told you so, okay? I freaking told you so. Now look, now look. I wasn't the only one that said it. I'm not claiming to be the only one that said it. Um, but before we get into the episode itself, before we get into talking about episode 98 proper, I just gotta make sure that we're all on the same page here, okay? If anybody out there still thinks that this sneering blue motherfucker is just some sort of neutral party that doesn't get involved in the realms of good or evil or anything like that. I seriously got a question whether God Usopp, you know, beat you over the head with his 10-ton hammer, okay? Because it is made painfully... I mean, there there was enough evidence for me, like, a while back, like, during the Zenek exhibition match, there was enough evidence for myself to confirm that there's something fishy with the Grand Priest and his angels. Uh, but this episode pretty much cinches it. So, first off is this. I mean, I, I, I don't know what anime you're watching, but, yeah, this is not the appearance of somebody that uh, is a good guy, alright? Just instantly no. Um, and also, we get a little scene from Mojito. You know, Mojito is the angel from Universe 9, who's, you know, Sidra's attendant. And, um, just moments at the end of the episode, after Universe 9 is just completely just obliterated, just erased from existence by Zeno, this is the appearance that Mojito gives. This is the facial expression. The god of destruction, Sidra, is gone. The Supreme Kai, Ro, is gone. Every other Kaio in Universe 9, gone. Every other living being and mortal in Universe 9. Every Proton, gone. And he's given the fucking mm -hmm, Dr. Evil smirk, you know? It would just make it even worse if he actually just put up the pinky like, mm -hmm, Yes, it's, it's so glorious that our, I guess, our master plan has fully uh, been realized. I mean, it's obvious. Now look. Now look, you could always say there might be a big spin on this, like they're setting them up to be evil, but in reality it's going to be like this big flip at the end, where he, the reason that Mojito is smirking because like he knows that the, the universe is not actually gone, it might come back now, or this is all just a big game by the Grand Priest. Oh, it's a big game by the Grand Priest, and what I think is going down that, you know, after all the universes are erased, or after ne when the uni uh, Tournament of Power is nearing its conclusion, he's going to make his motives known and he's gonna like you know thrust us into the next story arc where I don't know the angels are made to be the new villains or something I don't know maybe he's trying to you know create a whole new reality or something uh, subservient I mean so he's tired of being subservient to Zeno he wants to go off and do his own thing I, I don't know I don't know um but yeah, so let's let's just get into the episode, and then we'll get to that when we get to that at the end. Um, but yeah, so this episode, pretty much just one big punching bag for Universe 9. That's all it is. Universe 9 is made into an example of what happens after somebody loses the Tournament of Power, after all ten members of a team are, are knocked off the side. We get to see what actually happens. Um, and you know what? I... I wasn't putting a lot of money on Universe 9. I don't think a lot of people were. I mean, if anyone was going to... Unless, unless the bet was, who's going to get erased first? You know, I think, okay, Universe 9. Um, but you know what? I didn't think they looked that bad, you know, aesthetically. You know, like, the trio de dangers I thought looked okay. I mean, I'm not really into furries too much. But yeah, they, they looked all right, I guess. Um, their powers were kind of interesting. You know, uh, uh, Basil's kicking orbs, that was neat. Lavender's poison, that was awesome. Uh, Bergamo's I enhancement ability, he doesn't really use it at all this episode. But I thought, okay, that's whatever, it's cool. Um, the other members of Team Universe 9, honestly, I said it before, they just kind of look like a bunch of Yu-Gi-Oh cards. Um, they got the guy, the steel skin dragon dude. They got this guy that can shoot ice. They got this red dude that can shoot, like, string. Uh, they got the rabbit chick, which I think is just there for furry fan service because I don't remember her doing a single thing. Uh, so, first service? First service, I, I guess? I don't know. Um... But, uh, yeah, she's just there, and, uh, some, like, other members that I don't remember all too well that, that are part of Universe 9, and then the trio to Dangers. Um, but yeah, in this episode, Goku and Vegeta team up, so that's pretty cool, that's, like, the highlight of the episode, we see Goku and Vegeta teaming up, well, at least a as best they can, uh, they argue at first. Um, and, uh, by the way, that white aura that we saw in the preview for the last episode, a lot of people thought that was gonna be, like, a big new technique or something that Goku's gonna come up with, like, he's enhancing his key or something like that. No, it's just, uh, it's just a barrier, that's all it was it was just remember when um vegeto got consumed by boo and they threw up a barrier to kind of protect themselves from boo's innards you know that's basically like the same thing like setting up just just a, i guess a layer of really dense key 
so that Lavender's poison fists don't actually make contact with the skin. Because since Sensu Beans are not involved here, you're not allowed to have them, you know, you get any poison on you and it spreads, you have no way of effectively healing yourself. Uh, since there's no healing people on Team Universe 7, so they'd be pretty much out of luck there. Um, so yeah, just, just barriers, that's all it is really. Vegeta throws one up too. Although with Vegeta, it's kind of inconsistent. You know, one shot he'll have the barrier up, the next shot he won't. It, it's, it's screwy. Um, but yeah, uh, we get to see what all the Universe 9 guys can do. There's kind of a scene there where the, the ice guy freezes Vegeta's arm and Ro has this big thing where he's like, oh, his, his, his attack freezes his opponent to the bone. I'm like, really? Freezes him to the bone. I, I, uh, and I'm sitting there just like, oh, dollars to donuts. Vegeta just powers up to Super Saiyan and breaks the ice. Oh, look, he just powered up to Super Saiyan and broke the ice, you know? So, whatever. Freezing to the bone, my ass. Um, the string dude doesn't really go anywhere. Uh, the biggest threat are the trio de dangers themselves, and they have this thing called the Dangers Triangle, which everybody makes fun of, like, for the tacky name, but that seems one of the more common like, less tacky names in fucking Dragon Ball, you know? Like, I would consider, like, um, Vegeta's, like, uh, you know, Big Bang Attack or his Final Flash a little bit more tacky name than just Danger's Triangle, but whatever. Um, even the Kamehameha, I mean, remember what the Kamehameha actually stands for. Turtle Destruction Wave, you know? Like, it's a goofy name, all right? It is rather goofy, kind of a little bit tacky there. But anyway, it's tacky for Master Roshi for coming up with it. But anyway, um, all of the members of Team Universe 9 get knocked overboard. Uh, the trio de dangers remain. Uh, they're on the side of the, of the tournament grounds. They amp up, ready to do their, like, you know, trio to danger, danger, death beam or whatever, where they all like, like shoot their key together. So it's like blue, red, and yellow all shooting out together. Kind of like, um, kind of like that try attack from Pokemon. You know, it's like, you know, all the uh, attacks, all the colors coming together and, uh, Goku and Vegeta counter with a pretty cool collaborative technique. I think the first time they've ever used this in the actual story, they might've used it in like a video game or something, but it's the final Kamehameha where, um, uh, Vegeta charges up his final flash, but he doesn't actually say flash. He's just final, and then Goku does Kamehameha, and it's the final Kamehameha, and just wipes them out. You'd think a technique like that would be in danger of killing them, but hey, they're a little bit sturdy anyway. Uh, so it just knocks them off the side of the thing. And then, after all ten members have been have been fallen off the arena, they get sent back to the area where, like, the waiting area with Ro and Sidra and Mojito, and they all just land there, and then we finally get to see what happens. I thought it was going to be, like, wait until every single uh, member of the, the tournament has, like, wait until the tournament has concluded, you know, before they actually do the erasure process. But no, no, they, they, they stop the tournament for this. After all the members fall, the Grand Priest is just like, Universe 9 has been eliminated. They will now be erased on the spot. And then you see a scene with Zeno doing the god pad thing, erasing all the members. And it's like, it's dark, it's dark, let's erase it, let's erase it. And then you just see Zeno's combining their powers and just wiping out Universe 9. Uh, all the members in the team get wiped out as well as the entire universe. And then you just see Mojito there just smirking as the episode ends. So, um... I mean, it was cool to see Vegeta and Goku fighting. Uh, I mean, Universe 9, I, I wish that we would have maybe gotten a little bit more of them. They were just eliminated in the one episode. I mean, their designs weren't bad. I mean, they always looked like, like Yu-Gi-Oh cards, but they didn't design one bad. We all knew what was going to happen, though. Like, the guy with the, I think his name was Shillon or Chiffon or whatever, the, 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 the steel dragon guy. He comes up like, my skin's like steel. And then Goku punches him in his base, and he's like, ho, 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 didn't do anything. And we're like... All right, we know how the fuck this is going to happen. He's going to go Super Saiyan and then beat the shit out of him, and he does, but whatever. All right, it's fine. Aside from the rabbit girl, they all get they all get enough, you know, exposition on their abilities anyway. Oh, by the way, the uh, the rabbit girl, she just ends up... We don't actually see her get knocked over. She just ends up back next to Ro and Sidra, and they're like, Whoa, you were defeated too, rabbit girl? And then you see a scene where 18's just kind of looking... It's the only time she shows up in the whole episode. Just this weirdest scene where 18's looking over... And then looks back and then just walks away. So did 18 knock her over when we weren't looking? Like, I don't know. But, um, yeah, so we, we get that moment. And then Zeno just erases the entire thing. And then that's where the episode ends. We see Goku kind of staring up at, at the Grand Priest. And that's when the Grand Priest does his little sneer thing. 
and it's just like we uh huh, this this is this is for keepsies you know um so the tournament's gonna continue next episode i don't think we're gonna get like a one universe erased per episode kind of thing i think this was just like an example to see what was gonna happen um although next episode does seem to be like a universe four centric episode between goku i mean not goku uh krillin and 18 fighting together against universe four members so that'll be cool i, I think it's still a while yet until goku's gonna fight jiren uh, I think we still got a few more episodes until we get to that point. Maybe it'll be like each episode, Goku is like, Jiren, and then heads toward him and then gets like sideswiped by somebody else. Um, but you know, it was, it was, it was a decent episode, you know, just to get to see some, you know, cool attacks and everything like that. We don't get to usually see all the different techniques that they're implementing. Um, like the, um, I mean, it's very obvious, like, we knew how it was going to go down, like, the cat lady from Universe 9, her and Lavender were kind of, like, double-teaming Vegeta, and they managed to get a few hits on, on off on them, but you, you know what's going to happen, it's like, Vegeta's going to play them against each other, and sure enough, he does, you know, the cat girl ends up cutting Lavender by accident, and it's like, oh no, their whole team just falls apart after that, pretty much, um... But let me, let me, let me bring up something else. Let me bring up something else that people have been saying. So, some people have been saying, you know, the winner of the tournament's gonna get a wish on the Super Dragon Balls, right? So couldn't they just use the powers of the Super Dragon Balls to just bring all the universes back? Look, guys, um, it's made perfectly clear multiple times in this story that Zeno's power is supreme, Okay. I don't care if the dragon is the size of, well, the entire universe. I, I don't care how big and shiny the dragon is, okay? I, I mean, you might be able to wish the dragon to... I mean, you might be able to have a wish, you know, for the dragon to bring back a universe. But Zeno would could just snap his fingers and erase it again. Y you know? Or the, the Grand Priest could be smart enough to be like, you cannot wish for bringing a universe back, though. That's like a stipulation. You know, now th there's other ways around that. Like I've said, you know, maybe Goku's gonna wish for... Well, th this was back before we knew... We just assumed that it was gonna be at the end of the tournament when all the universes were erased. And we assumed that maybe Goku was gonna wish that all the residents of, un of all the other universes gonna get sent to Universe 7 because there's some vacancy in Universe 7 and they could stay there. But now that we know they're erased already, there, there might be no coming back from that. And the dragon, the dragon is only from Super, from the Dragon Balls from Universe 7 and 6, just from two universes. Zeno is the god of all universes. The Grand Priest is reigning supreme. So, I mean, it's like... The, the dragon's big and powerful, but I don't think they're gonna be he's gonna be able to bring back all the universes, even if he could. I think Zeno would just be like, you know, I'm gonna erase them again. Or the Grand Priest was like, you can't do that. Just that defeated the whole purpose of the universe of the thing. Zeno's gonna Zeno, you you think they're cheating, right? Uh huh. Let's erase them then. You know, that's that this shit all over again. You know what I mean? Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I don't know. I don't know what's gonna go down, but don't trust these fuckers. Just don't. All right, I, I think it's gonna move into the next arc, and I think even because remember the, the the angels are like, I don't want to say they're robots because they're not, but it's like made very clear they're under the control of the grand priest. Like whenever a god of destruction is rendered uh, obsolete, whenever one dies or or gets eliminated by a supreme kai dying or whatever, um, it's stated that the angels go dormant. They go like. Doo until like a new dra until a new god of destruction is founded and then they're like whoop hello there lord beerus i am weiss you know that kind of shit so it seems like they do have some connection to the grand priest where the grand priest could say you know hey weiss fight that guy and weiss would have like no choice in the matter it would be like he would be controlled like a robot sort of although hey that's something else sidra's gone mojito's still active so hey that's that's something else maybe to keep in mind there. But aside from those, pretty pretty quick episode, I would say. Quick, you know, just basically just one fight the entire time. The ending was, of course, the big shocker. Uh, and I hope to see uh, Krillin into some action. I think the next episode is called, like, Krillin's New Secret Technique or something. So we're going to be getting some Krillin action for the first time in quite a while in Super. So, um... Yeah, I'm looking forward to that, looking forward to the 18, so that, that'll be cool. But uh, anyway, hope you guys for watching, and uh, please forgive the uh, lateness of the video, but um, we managed to do it. Here we are. Uh, thanks for watching, everybody. This will be Techie 101 signing out. Have a good night. Tell you what, man, I tell you what, evil son of a...